Today, we're going to compare two breweries that have absolutely nothing in common. Or do they? Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes that's right today we're taking a look at two beers from two completely different breweries one here in the UK a old school trad ale and well Sierra Nevada the kingpin if you like of the US craft beer movement and it does seem a little bit odd to be comparing these two in theory Adams I guess traditionally is well traditional considered a bit you know just very old school questionably a bit stuffy and then obviously Sierra Nevada absolutely not so you're probably wondering why on earth I would do this and there is a very good reason and that is that reason this is a collab between the two of them it's called Eastern Edge and it is a yeah it's a collab between an old school British ale brewer and Sierra Nevada I've been asking myself for a while why it's not a brand new beer don't get me wrong this isn't groundbreaking news i think it was kind of their special birthday edition release or something like that back end of last year but i've just got a hold of a can very much thanks to mark over at the craft beer hub he bought me one up when he uh, came to see the sights and sounds of my lovely city a few weeks ago and yeah he bought me a can up given that adnams is one of his local breweries so mark thank you very much for that i'll pop a link in the description below if you want to go check out mark's channel after this video but yeah, for now, we're actually going to compare all of these beers. It's been a hot minute since I've tried, I was going to say an Adnams beer, that's not true. I did have one relatively recently, but it was one of their more modern kind of craft inspired takes. It's definitely not what most people think of when they think of the Adnams brewery. This, however, Adnams Broadside is basically their bread and butter beer. It is the pinnacle. It's the one, it's their best seller, I reckon. Maybe Go Ship uh, does it nowadays, but you know, it's, it's pretty much a solid, it's, it's a throwback. It's an old school proper British ale and then of course Sierra Nevada's pale ale which is again I guess their it is their flagship it's not their most exciting necessarily but it is their de facto their go-to the one you can get pretty much anywhere and then we'll be comparing and contrasting those two to see how on earth they came up with whatever delights hold for us in this can of Eastern Edge. So I'm gonna do the Adnams first, just pop these two to the side. This is gonna be a full rundown. It's just gonna be a taster, a little kind of a, trying to understand what to expect from Adnams, what to expect from Sierra Nevada. And as I say, try and work out exactly how we're gonna end up in the middle. So this is Adnams Broadside. It is a 6.3% um, strong original ale. Um, this is, I don't, I mean, I think it has always been that ABV, but I never look at it and go, oh, that's a strong beer. But actually, it is. It's it's pretty pokey at 6.3. Um, I'm going to do all of these in little craft-style glasses, just so it's fair. It's not really the glass you drink a bottle of Broadside out of traditionally or frequently, but it is what we're doing today. Before we crack it open, then, here is a quick look at the bottle. I mean, you get the idea. It is trad through and through. Nice bottle cap on this, I'll show you in a second, if I can get it off without destroying it. There you go, it's just, just says Adnams, but it's a nice, it's a nice touch. So, Adnams Broadside, it's a ruby red beer. I don't know if you will really come across on the camera, it looks quite dark, but hold it up to a light, it's a proper deep amber hue nice big foamy kind of off-white head on it it is to be honest i didn't really think i liked this beer but it's been a hell of a long time since i've had it and actually the aroma is pretty pleasing for a trad style it's got that kind of nice rich ruby malt it's the well, not the ruby malts thing but, you know the malts that constitute most of ruby ales some slightly darker ones a bit of uh, crystal malt often thrown in there and it's got this beautiful kind of red berry nose on it. A little bit of hop, as you would imagine, but it kind of fuses into this nice fruit palette rather than being a distinctly hoppy beer on its own, if that makes sense. It smells good. Cheers. It's big, it's rich, roasty, fruity, sweet, biscuit. A bit of citrus actually in there as well from the hop. It's, it's one of those beers that I actually think will stand the test of time for some reason. It's got... It's just got this nice big rich thing about it that's not 
necessarily overdone anywhere, but every time you come back to it, you go, yeah, you know what? On a cool autumn evening, which is not today, we're in the middle of summer, it is red hot in here, so not quite the beer for the occasion, but it does have this just, yeah, this thing about it that just goes, mm, okay, I could probably get drawn back into that one a bit. Um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale up next, and this is a 5% on the nose pale ale. Um, they put draft style on their cans, I'm not really sure what that means to be honest, but um, I'm guessing that's probably just a legacy thing that's been on there since the dawn of time. Um, I mean, I should say, Adnams, proper old school, you know, 18 something or other, I think it says on the bottle, uh, it's comm commemorating the Battle of Sol Bay in 1672, but that's not when the brewery was established. I'm pretty sure these are over 100 years apart, though. So Adnams is 1872, and Sierra Nevada is 1980, so I was right with that one. And they are 108 years apart, I think, if my maths is correct. So, you know, Sierra Nevada's been around for quite a while now, but... Adnum's, yeah, legacy stuff, really. Um, so, let's get into the Sierra Nevada. I have had a can of this recently, and it is just always the most... It kind of doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, beer. It's always fantastic. Doesn't matter whether it's a red hot day, doesn't matter whether it's, you know, middle of winter, whatever, whatever. It's always just a solid, solid beer. Um, in the glass, this one's a bit more lively. Um, nice orange body to it. It is a pale, pale ale, but... Well, sorry. It is a pale ale, but it's not actually that pale. Um, nowhere near as dark, of course, as the Adnams, but it has got this beautiful, kind of slightly deeper, roastier, almost golden ale um, hue to it. And the thing that hits you in this is two distinctly separate notes. It's got this nice, big, bready, almost German malt lager base. And then comes this kind of almost aggressive, citrus, piney, almost slightly dank hop note from that, what is that quintessential US craft beer scene hop style. But in this one, I think it's why it's so popular, that aggressive note just falls off the edge and turns into something a bit sweeter and a little bit fruity. So let's give it a go. Cheers. That beer really never fails to put a smile on my face. It's just, it's a complete balanced package. And I'll be honest, as is the Adnams, but this has just got this kind of delicacy to it that just makes me really appreciate it. It's refreshing and intense and full bodied and easy going all at the same time, which is well, something you just don't get really in many beers. That is absolutely fantastic so i'm gonna go back and forth between these two a minute before we get to the main event here the collab eastern edge beer yeah the adnum's just rich fruity almost syrupy in comparison to the sierra nevada pale ale but somehow the body on the sierra nevada pale ale is actually i think a bit thicker and better than the adnum's beer which is maybe not a huge surprise given that your well, adnum's were a or what they call a regional brewer. I'm not really sure if that term is still relevant in today's market, but before the days of massive kind of drinks owning conglomerate organizations like, you know, AB and Bev and people like that, it was, well, regional brewers were basically the big dogs. You know, you had your local brewers, but all your pubs or not the majority of your pubs would have been owned by your regional brewer and this was the regional brewer down in at least parts of east anglia i'm not sure exactly what area they covered if i'm totally honest but you know it, it, that was the thing back 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 in the day 100 odd years ago so now then let's get on to this adnams and sierra nevada eastern edge it's a 4.8 percent transatlantic pale ale it's the weakest of the lot um, I don't want to read too much into it because I don't want to take away any kind of flavour notes, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just the weakest of the lot, really. Um, it has got a beautiful can design, though. I'd say it's, well, it's, it's not, it's neither of them, really. I guess it's a nice neutral blend. It's definitely got Sierra Nevada colourway coming in to that, but in terms of the Adnum stuff, other than the logo, I mean, maybe it looks a bit more like some of their kind of more modern craft cans, but it's definitely not a hot back to kind of their old school ways. So let's get this in the glass.
in the glass then, it's very similar to the Sierra Nevada, except for, well, sorry, the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, this is Sierra Nevada and Adnams, um, but it's very similar, to the, but it's got a massive amount of haze to it. I don't know if that's going to come across on camera or not, but Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and the Adnams Broadside, both absolutely pitch perfectly clear beers. This collab beer has got some... It's got some haze funk, funk to it. Um, not a bad thing, just an interesting observation, really. Um, it's got a properly white head to it. It's a bit foamy. It doesn't maybe look as good as the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale's head did to start with. And again, there was a lot of that and it's died off. So it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, let's find out. Aromas. Interesting. Now, this isn't meant to be a blend of these beers or anything, by the way. This is just a a point of reference test to see how much from each of these breweries really ended up in this beer and i have to say i think the aroma is actually a bit underwhelming it's got the hop character from the pale ale but it's a bit more dank it's a bit more earthy it's a bit cabbagey to coin a phrase that uh, mark who gave me this can likes to use it's got that real kind of earthy almost I can't tell if i'm put off by this or not kind of vibe it's not necessarily unpleasant but it's not super kind of it doesn't drag you into a oh yeah this is going to be a really nice experience it does seem quite dynamic it seems quite you know full of life full of flavor it's going to be quite a rich and considered experience i think but there's really no malt character coming through and it's just really relying on that hot backbone which is let's say a trend of modern craft whether you're on it doesn't matter which side of the Atlantic you're on, to be honest. A lot of them do it, which is why I often find myself going back to these slightly older beers, because there's just a balance there that you often don't get in more modern interpretations. But as I say, it doesn't smell bad. It's just, I'm not I'm not wowed from the off, let's put it that way. But let's give it a go, shall we? Cheers. Okay, so I'm laughing because uh, when Mark gave me this, he says, you've got to film this. I want to see your reaction to it because You'll be sat there going, where's the Sierra Nevada? And he was absolutely right, because up front, it's all just kind of generic English pale ale. For me, personally, I mean, I chose to go with the broadside rather than their ghost ship for this test, because... Well, I probably shouldn't have done, because it would have been all pale ales, then it would have made a bit more sense, but I just prefer this style. British pale ales, especially slightly older pale ales, just... I don't know, they have a drabness about them. It's also it's almost it's almost like a damp quality. Like I don't really know how to explain it better than that. But yeah, it's got this thing, and this does the same. It's got light citrus, lemon, bit of grassy note, maybe, right up front. And then it's almost after you swallow it, you kind of your tongue's taken a second to acclimatize. Right in the middle of the palate, you almost get this kind of turnover where you get hit with that beautiful malt profile from the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And then the hops start to just, I don't know, get up and dance a little bit. It's kind of a sweet, super resiny, dank pine. It's not the dankest of dank beers, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of subtle, but distinctly damp hop flavor that comes through. It feels very much like the execution is Sierra Nevada, but it's definitely not the same hop profile as the pale ale, which I think is just Cascade, if I recall correctly. This feels like it's got something else in it, something a bit more, yeah, a little bit more intense, perhaps. It is a very, very nice beer. And actually, as I'm sitting here taking a few more sips, I'm starting to think that whilst my initial reaction was not to be particularly wowed, what I do think is if Adnams takes some learning experience from making this beer, they could be on a very good road indeed for the future. So anyway, before we take a quick look at the can, I'm gonna to top it up and we'll do a very quick top to bottom taste test so you can try and understand exactly what I'm waffling on about. I'll be honest, now I've pulled the rest of it in, it's actually looking a little bit better in my opinion. The head seems to be a bit more considered, kind of closer, small bubbles going on there. So initially, initially you get a mouthful of foam if you pour it like that. Take two. So initially, it's light, spritzy. Almost reminds me of champagne yeast, actually, on the front of the tongue. It's got that kind of 
almost semi-sour astringency you associate with champagne, which ends up associating with champagne yeast when it's used in beer. Don't know if it is or not. I suspect it's not, but it's got it's got something like that experience. Then kind of on the first third of the tongue, as I said before, it's really quite just generic British old school pale ale. There's a little bit of grass in there, quite lemon forward. It's not even like a dynamic citrus range. It's just kind of middle of the road, not particularly sweet lemon, bit dishwatery if I'm honest. That's the bit of the beer that I'm really not that keen on. Then as it gets towards the back of the tongue, you start to pick out a few more bits, it becomes a bit of stone fruit even coming in there. It's still grassy, but that grass is starting to embolden itself a little bit you're starting to kind of breach into that pine territory it's not properly dank yet though because on the swallow you get just a flash kind of a one second jot of oh there's something a bit more deep a bit more earthy green that resinous thing but it's just there for a flash and you're thinking oh was that it was that it and after you've swallowed it Something happens to kind of the back half of your tongue. It just becomes alive. You get a nice big hit, as I said before, again, of that glorious Sierra Nevada malt base. And then those much more, I guess, modern, depthy, earthy, super dank, super resinous. It's bitter, but it doesn't really last very long. It'll be interesting to see if they put the IBU values on this, the bitterness units, because it's just it's bitter but it's not it's quite soft and then it, it just kind of it, it jumps up and down quite a lot um it's not a smooth drinking experience if that makes sense you kind of up and down all over the place trying to remember what you're looking out for and whatever else and you have to say it's, it's drying it's fresh it's almost herbal it's gone away from dank and we're into this kind of weird kind of citric herbal fusion thing so it is a it is a quality decent beer but I would be hard pressed to tell you that I'd rather drink it over the other two so yeah it's interesting what we will do though is take a quick look at this cap to see if we can learn any more about it so uh, Eastern Edge the ingredients are water malted barley malted rye that's interesting so rye often imparts kind of a bit of a spice a bit of zip a bit of zing I wonder if that's the um, contributing to the kind of thing where I said like, after you swallow it you, your tongue almost, almost becomes alive kind of you know just it starts to get a bit dancey um, that might explain it it doesn't come across particularly yeah spiced or peppery like I would often get out of a rye beer but uh, maybe there's not that much in it um, and that's 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 all the ingredients other than uh, hops and yeast um, does it give us anything it's 4.8% where was it brewed actually that would be an interesting thing to find out uh, did it tell me it should tell me ah here we go yeah it is actually brewed at Adnams not at Sierra Nevada I can't say that's a surprise um, I think I don't know it's just it's lacking maybe a little bit of the Sierra Nevada Zaz that we get used to. It does feel quite similar to some of their, um, what's the nice way to say this, uh, export only options. Uh, Sierra Nevada have got a couple of beers that are basically for kind of European and UK supermarkets only, as far as I understand, and they are, well, poor compared to kind of what the US get um, or the original. So, yeah, it's got a bit of that vibe about it. Um, it says on the back, Adams in Sierra Nevada have brewed Eastern Edge, celebrating the role of the worldwide beer community in Adams' 150-year history. Both have an influential vista on their Eastern Edge. Adams has the sea and Sierra Nevada has the mountains. They have inspired a pioneering outlook and a mutual respect for the environment. Interest. I mean, from that you would read, um, we've both got something to the east of us. Uh, and we both like nature a bit, so let's do a beer. I mean, I'm all for it, but it doesn't seem like a like distinct reason. Um, it says yeast from both breweries plus UK and US variety of Cascade and Chinook hops give resinous pine, grapefruit, and pineapple flavors. Resinous pine, yes. I'll be honest, the grapefruit for me was just falling into slightly flat lemon. Pineapple, not, not really. I mean, it's got a bit of a sour kick, I guess. You could attribute that to pineapple, but you could attribute that to lemon, so... Yeah, whatever. Um, it says, uh, rye and East Anglian malts add a biscuity balance to this truly transatlantic collaboration. The biscuit malt base is really, really good. It's just not 
evident for very long, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so there we go, we learned that. So it's got UK and US Cascade and UK and US Chinook, which I get it. You were trying to do a half and half kind of collab thing. I'll be honest, what I would have preferred was a shed load of UK malt and then fill it up with US hops because I think that is, look, they're the same hops, they do the same thing, but there's a reason people will pay more for US hop beer and that's just because there's better conditions for growing them. Um, the malts are Cara, Pale Ale and Rye. The IBUs I mentioned, the bitterness units, 35, which yeah, okay. I think at times it feels more bitter than that, but through a lot of it, it feels a lot less. So on average, I think, yeah, absolutely. The yeast, yeah, so it's both Adnams and Sierra Nevada's yeast. I said it's kind of tasted like champagne yeast. It is a blend in effect. So yeah, it can do some funky things. In a way, that's kind of mixed fermentation, but just not with a wild yeast. That's, yeah, that's interesting. It definitely gives a different yeast experience to most beers. So absolutely it says it's great with vegetable enchiladas and campfire burgers there you go um one quick last look at the can it is a very very nice beer indeed if you like distinctly i'm not best to explain it. it it is distinctly you know dank resinous earthy grassy mossy almost kind of style but in a very subtle package. I've had stuff like Sierra Nevada's um, Dankful, like that is just like blow your head off resin basically. This is more considered, it's calmer, it's got that kind of intensity in terms of how it covers the flavour spectrum in the beer but at a much lower, lower level. And actually that's probably not quite true, it's a bit less than that because that, that Dankful is, well just frankly insane, but you get what I mean, it's very much that way inclined. All of the other kind of softer, more balancing notes are a bit scarce, if I'm honest. So I don't really know what to sell you in conclusion here. I'm going to zip back through them again. But the... Yeah, I mean, traditional Adnams bottles, beautiful autumn winter warmers, really, I'll be honest, I don't like the ghost ship pale out, so I didn't buy it for this comparison. But that that's not bad, the broadside. The, um, the Eastern Edge is as stark a difference as you're ever going to get between two, I was gonna say similarly stationed beers, but they're not ready. This one's nearly, uh, well, it's nearly six and a half percent. This is only four nine. Wildly different. Somehow the Eastern Edge, after you've been drinking the broadside, just comes in hard, like on that hot value. It's, it's distinctly obvious. It doesn't feel like, you know, you would expect a much stronger beer to really overpower a weaker one. Absolutely not. If anything, this is punching even harder. But as, you've probably guessed by now. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is pretty much unbeatable, if I'm honest. It is just, you know, as an everyday, all occasion, always puts a smile on your face thing, I'm headed over there. But what I will say is, all of these are good in their own unique ways. It's just that some of them are a bit better more of the time. But you know what? It's a great experiment. Love to see collabs like this and would love to see more collabs like this. You know, take some super old school, you know, dusty UK breweries and smash them together. It doesn't have to be a US, you know, it doesn't have to be a grand international affair like this is. Just, you know, take, in my home city, for example, Nottingham, Neon Raptor kind of, it's a bit of a darling of the craft beer scene right now. Um, you know, they do some weird, wonderful things. I had a, like a slushy float with their vice beer the other week. Um, not going to go as far as to say that it's good beer in terms of if we're being pragmatic about what makes good beer. But you know what I mean? It's all a unique thing, but it, it, it certainly tastes good. Um, sorry, kind of losing track there. You know, taking them and for them to do a collab with someone like Shipstons, like they're the oldest of old school breweries you're going to get. I mean, actually, they kind of went bankrupt and got bought out now. Someone's brewing their stuff, but you know what I mean? It's that super old, dusty, old boys club kind of stuff. And, you know, seeing a, a fusion of those two, I think actually might do the beer world some favors because I'm not going to go as far as to say that it's divisive right now because I think that's far from the truth. But I think learning a little bit from each other might, yeah might yield some weird and wonderful brews. And that really 
is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.